Hey, I'm Adam with Adam's Welding. Today I'm coming to you from the welding rig. We're going to talk about the water I have on this rig, the Lincoln Ranger 225. Stay tuned while I go to the back of the truck and show it to you. Here's my Lincoln Ranger 225. It's an engine driven welder capable of producing up to 225 amps and is a MIG, TIG, and stick welder all combined into one. It has three tap settings for your amperage and a continuous uh, adjustment knob for your fine control. It has four 120 amp receptacles and one 240 amp receptacle that will be powered by the generator on the water. The generator produces 9,000 continuous watts with 10,500 peak watts. The fuel capacity is listed on the side of the water and has a 12 gallon fuel tank. On the top of the water, you have this hatch to be able to access your air cleaner. It has a Kohler motor in it. You have a hatch on the right side of the water to access your oil drain and your oil filter along with your fuel filter. Now I'm going to show you how to set up the welding leads on this welder. Okay, now I've got my uh, welding leads out. One is a ground clamp to have on the right side and on the left side is your stinger lead. The stinger lead I have set up as a quick connect style and the ground clamp I use just a standard uh, stud and a nut. I'll show you how to set that up now. The stud and nut side, you've got to take this nut off. It's usually, you have to use a wrench. You unthread it off. It just takes a little while. That's why people prefer the quick connects. You put this little eyelet on there. You tighten this nut back down. You have the same over here on the positive side, which will have this quick connect little dog tail on here. So you take and you see how this has this stud here. This here has a little bar down in there that this notch engages into when you turn it. So you stick that in there. And you just twist quarter turn. Now that's how you set up stinger leads on an engine drive welder for stick. To crank the welder, you have two knobs that are important. You have a choke selector, which you must pull out to open the choke so you can crank it. And you have this one over here. This here is your uh, auto idle, which is your low high, and your high idle, and then your start selection. When you turn it to low idle, that there would be your engine's running and it'll idle down to a set RPM and it'll idle up from there when you need more current. High idle is always constant, which is used for gouging or when you're having difficulty striking a rod at low idle. And then you have your start selection. The way you crank this is you turn it all the way to start till it cranks, then you depress your choke after 30 seconds or when motors reach temp. Now I'm going to show you how to do this. And then after you hit, uh, after it cranks and you do all that, then if you choose, you can turn it down to auto idle. Turn it to the off position. 
Now that's all for how to crank up and run an engine drive rotor. Now a Lincoln Ranger 225 or a Miller Bobcat 225 is as small as I'd go for your own business. Anything smaller is going to be too small to really do what you want to do. And of course you can always go bigger, but I think it's better to start with something like this. This is what I started with and it served me just fine. Now next I've got a couple small jobs lined up that I'll show you all some video and some stuff on what I do on those. And I'll be posting in the next couple weeks. So I'll show you all that then. Until next time, keep on welding, folks. If you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe and click that little bell icon so you can get an update from all our future content.